Hello. Hi, everyone. Sorry. I was a bit ambitious about the pre-sketch. Of course, it took longer than usual because it's quite detailed. So, um, later, after class, I'll also create a sketch for you guys um, digitally. So you can um, also see how I sketch it out and why it took so long. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but I think it's worth it. Uh, when I want to do something um, very detailed, I do. I make sure that I sketch it out as best as I could because um, it's also going to help um, once you start painting. Okay, so you don't cover um, necessary details that shouldn't be covered with um, two um, dark colors. Okay, so anyhow, um, this is my sketch. Okay, I hope you can sort of see it. Yeah. Okay, so it's um, it's very detailed. All the the lines of the, the curves of the petals. Okay, so I used a a full page. Sometimes I do this. You do this too. Like um, I have uh, other pads, but the thing about pads is um, if you're not done, you can't remove it yet. So I have several pads, and they're all um, there's something in um, not finished yet in each one. So I had to use a big one, and we can always divide it into several parts. So anyway, hello Vivian, Terry, and Joe, and everybody else. Okay, thank you for joining me. And today, um, we are doing a peony. But this time around, uh, we're going to do a, a close-up of it. Okay, because even though it's this close, uh, I'm sure you all can tell that it's a peony. Okay, so they're so beautiful from all angles. From a bud, from a unfurling bud to a full bloom. And even this close-up of it. Okay, so... Let's do a close-up of a peony because it's so beautiful. When I saw the photo, I just decided to do this. Okay, so I shared it here in the event so you can find it here. And then later after class, um, I also do a digital sketch uh, to help you guys out because it did take me so long. <laughs> so I feel like if you see a, a line sketch of it, it might help. Okay, so for today, I prepared, I just have um, all the palettes right beside me just in case but I'll start off with uh, these two the Classico and um, the Moderno so the Classico is the one with all the classic colors and the Moderna is the one with the more uh, modern colors uh, like the pink and the purple okay so I also have this because the pink here is perfect all right so now it's uh, time to flip the camera down so you can see my desk and we can start painting Okay, let me flip this about and then let me fix my lights so it's bright. Okay. And my other light. Okay, so if you if you see my working area, <laughs> I have all sorts of paraphernalia. Okay, they're much brighter. Okay. So how are you guys? How's your Monday? Um it's very busy here where I am. I am. It's our elections. So, okay. So I hope you can see the sketch. Okay. It's just lightly sketched so that it doesn't um, really mar the end um, painting. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see because we're going to do a lot of detail. All right. There you go. Okay. So again, um, let's start with, of course, the colors. Okay, so like I mentioned, uh, the Moderno has the pink and the purple. Um, I'll definitely need the pink, but I also need some red, some kind of red, because the pink here is, is so bright. But I find when I look at the peony um, here, it's more of a warm pink. So I would need some uh, to add some red, a warm red to it, and maybe a dash of yellow. Let's see. Okay, so we'll start with, of course... Uh, mixing the colors that we will need so if you have white you can also um, try it out try to mix your red with your white and see if you like the pink that you end up with okay so just to begin with I'll use my uh, mid-sized and small brushes okay so of course we're gonna do more con uh, of a controlled work so we don't need huge brushes okay 
so let's start by mixing some colors okay so let's see if uh, what can I do with my licking okay, let's let's start with red okay, let's start with red let's start with our basics okay so let's say we have some red okay let's add some white okay but remember if you do this of course it's not gonna be as um, translucent as you would want it to be maybe okay so let's say you have your um, pyrrole red with um, this is okay, pyrrole red with your Chinese white okay so we can swatch it out and see what we get okay so it is a, a nice pink already but I want to add a little bit of warmth so I'm going to get some Hansa yellow medium and mix a little bit of it and okay so I get more of a peachy pink so you can have both okay you just tweak your colors whichever way you prefer again this is uh, your own preference so I'll add just a smidge of red okay so this one is the perfect one for me so this one was a bit more cool red this one's too um, warm and this one is just right okay so just red um hansa yellow medium so a uh, kind of uh, this one is hansa yellow medium okay so a bit of a deeper golden yellow and white so all these uh these three gave me this really nice pink that i would use for my um peony now okay so what we'll do is okay so i gave you the reference photo i won't show it here because it's going to take up such a big space okay so what what we'll do is we'll start with the outer parts of our petals okay so if you've um, attended one uh, any of my lives before that um, where I paint petals and flowers then you know that I like to paint wet and dry okay so um, I usually go for wet and dry when it's going to be um, detailed and I want a lot of control okay so with wet on dry you can control it really really well okay so what I do is I start from the edges uh, of the inner parts of the petals where it's shadowed I apply a deep color then I dip my brush in my water add water to dilute the paint and then keep pulling it outwards and adding water every now and then to lighten it until it reaches the edges okay so we're gonna do that technique all around for all the petals so let's start um, with the ones um, here on the outer okay so let's start with the outer petals okay so this is just the first layer so remember we, we, we're going to do at least three so let's start here so these petals on the outermost they're very shadowed okay so the whole petal is very deep in color so I'm going to apply it liberally and then that's when I start to add water okay so it's very shadowed except for the edges where it's the outside curl is curling in and so you see some lightness okay so when you do this um, just relax because it, it's divided by petal anyway so you can work in sections okay so don't you don't have to hurry and just take your time with each section you won't have those odd odd um, division suddenly because it's one whole um, area so this is the perfect complicated flower to paint because each petal can be worked separately section by section so you can really relax okay so again that's the first layer I it will definitely need more shadow later on but for, let's leave that for later okay let's move on to the next one beside it okay so I'm going to add The same mixture okay so right now it's gonna look like they're gonna um, they're just bleeding against each other 
because this is just our first layer so um, there are no deep shadows yet but later on this one will be um, a much much darker color okay. and here you don't have to do it smoothly because this flower has a ve very textured um, petals so you actually want your flower to have texture so just keep checking your reference photo and see how light you need to go maybe you're doing it too pink the edges are very pale okay so just check how pale and from where it starts okay so I just use three colors so it's not too hard if I suddenly um, run out and need to mix I just need to match this okay but if you have a hard time uh, matching then I suggest you mix a lot so that you don't have um, differing colors that might take away from your work okay so two petals down Qu very easy so I'm going to leave this for now and start working here so I can move from left to right slowly because I tend to smudge <laughs> my work so let me try to uh, think about that today and plan ahead okay so just like this one this one is also heavily shadowed so I have I can just really be liberal about my painting in and then again dip my brush in the water spread it out Okay, so you'll have to do a lot of going to your water, dipping, removing a bit of the mixture, diluting the paint, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so it'll be a workout for your arms. Okay, so this is sort of dry, so I can now go and paint in the outer curl, the petal. So if if you're viewing it like this this would be this part on the outside curling in slightly okay so have you guys i'm sure you guys tried painting peonies right because they're just so beautiful i think this is just my third time to paint it okay so i'm adding just the palest pink over here again on the, the slight curl that we can see and you will see that I left a, a bit of a white in between because based on the reference the tip of the petals has this really fine white edge so I just tried to add that here and you don't have to add like a whole line of white even if you paint over some parts that's okay great so next okay also here where it's dried I'm going to do the same thing and leave a slight for what a, a slight white line and then move on to the next petal okay so lots of layering of petals so you'll also be doing a lot of layering of your colors so just patience really and if you took your time to sketch it out sketch all the petals separately and with detail the necessary detail at least then it will be really um, so much easier because you won't have to be doing a lot of guesswork okay so here if i can i'm also apply, um, adding the texture again you can already add the texture as early as now So let's move on to this next one. So again, very deep. Inner part, about one third is a really deep pink. But I, I will actually add more layers definitely because it's still not the color that I'm aiming for. But again, with watercolor, it's always about layering, especially when you're doing um, detailed work. So 
don't judge your work too soon okay first layer is is barely nothing it's just really setting up your your shapes your first shades and that's it you'll see the magic of things coming together on your third or fourth layer okay so as you can see I already added some line linear strokes okay next um, I've run out of colors so I'm actually going to get my um, mixing plate so I can mix a lot of the color so that I can just keep working on straight okay so this is what I do when I need to clean my palette I just wet the, the paint and pick it up with my cloth or my paper towel okay so make sure it's clean of course otherwise um, your color will be uh, muddied with whatever color was there previously which is gray with mine so it's really gonna make my pink um, dead in my pink at least okay so again I used um, Pearl Scarlet okay a very nice not cool not warm red and more of a neutral red okay so we're going to need a lot of it because I put a lot of water next white so again just be careful just keep in mind that when when you add white it is going to uh, make it more um, opaque then let's add some of the Hansa yellow okay let's try it out so I've swatched it here previously so we can easily match it okay, so it's too light we need to add um, a little bit of everything again more red more white and then yellow okay and again swatch okay so just um, be patient you really need to do your color mixing and you need to be um, you know you need to try it out you need to make sure that your color matches your previous mix okay so this one is okay so now we can paint so I prepared I can set this aside I prepared enough I hope at least okay so let's go and continue okay so let's go with this one so this um, is a much lighter so we have some deep parts here just where the other petal overlaps it but most of the rest of the flower is or rather the petal is light pink so we need to add water now to our brush more water so sometimes when it, some pigments are just really really um, very pigmented I actually you know swish my brush a little bit in my water jar to really lighten the color that's in my brush okay so just really get used to how much water you need to add or how much pigment you need to remove it's a lot of uh, balancing okay so next so we're moving section by section but you already see the petals okay so that's um it's gonna look even better later once you add the second layer of a more purple mix so there's another very small petal inside so I'm adding it now and again I left a really very thin line of white ok 
okay and for this one inside it's really really deep okay so let's get a deep let's dunk in our brush in our mixture and just sweep it across this whole area and again we will still need to add another layer to this later to even add more shadow. Okay, the more contrast you have, it's really going to help with your end work. If you're always going to do more of the grayish tones, the mid-tones, um, it won't give your work contrast and it will also um, not give your work, uh, the, the, the you know, it doesn't give it... Um, a sense of a dynamic work so it feels flat okay so the more values you have in your work the better so don't be afraid to do the darks it's a good practice um, to start with um, sketching and shading and pencils because you really understand the importance of um, depth and volume by you know using values not just the mid values but also on the dark side and also on the very light side when you have all of those your work really gets elevated okay so um, I'll leave this to dry first before I add the dark areas here so that they don't bleed against each other and I, I keep my fine lines my fine edges okay so let's uh, work here there's also another dark section here so this, this is where all the petals just sort of cover, uh, overlap each other, and some pockets show up, but they're so covered that they're very deep in shadow. Okay, so as long as you get these little details, these tiny things right, it's really going to help your other petals pop up. So the shadows recede and your um, light petals um, advance. Okay, and also a little bit here, peeking through. Okay, so if you have like a number five to number seven brush that has a fine tip, it's uh, already perfect for doing a lot of the, the initial work. So far, I've just been using one brush and it's enough, okay? That's why I love round brushes with um, nice tips because I can really just work with one brush. I don't have to switch around often. So far, this is the pink that I like. I prefer the pinks that I mix over the pinks that are already pre-mixed. In fact, a lot of the colors that I use that I like are colors that I mixed from other colors. So I suggest that you also um, start by working with a limited palette and see how you can mix the other colors that you need from it. Because when you use a limited palette, your painting also looks more harmonious. Okay, so again, I'm also I'm stroking also in linear with linear strokes to al already add some of the texture. So you can also do that. You can start adding a little bit of the texture at this stage. That way, when you add later on, it's just going to add to the overall layering of textures and will look great. Okay. So now I feel like this is dry so I can now add this petal. Okay, so as you can see, it takes time but it's just the same technique over and over and just varying values or intensities. So some areas have a bit of a darker color, some not. So just check your reference photo every now and then 
I'm also adding some of the crumpling that I see. Some petals have slight crumples in them, natural ones. So I'm roughly adding them. Doesn't have to be perfect, like exactly how you see, but as long as soon as uh, as long as sorry, as long as you get the general placement, then that's okay. Okay, so don't get stuck trying to create a photograph of your watercolor work, okay? So this petal is more closed, so you can actually see more of the texture compared to the other petals that are more um, vertical. This one is um, more horizontal. Okay, again, adding my strokes. So when I'm going to do work like this, I also um, use, uh, I like to use cold pressed paper. If I know I'm going to do a lot of rubbing and adding and water, um, that way I can rub, but I won't be worried about ruining my paper. So this is where I, I don't scrimp because <laughs> it will really um, make your life so much harder if your paper is not cooperative. Okay, so I won't deepen this yet before I add in the, the next layer of shadows right here. So for now, that's okay. And I'm also going to add here. This is also a shadowed area. You just have to be careful not to cover the petals. Okay, you want to keep the, the curls of the petals because uh, for me, that's one of the most distinctive characteristics of peonies it's their um the edge of the petals they're not straight they're curled and in small curls very beautiful so i really try to to do them to add them because they add so much to the work and already if you do it um people can easily tell that you are painting a peony or you painted a peony okay so right now uh, I'm actually starting to see that it looks like a peony from this side so that's great okay I'll leave this area for later because this requires a lot of work a lot of detail work so let's go to the other side um if you can you can flip your paper if you want um in my case i should but it's full so let me just cut it okay give me time to just cut this and i'll continue okay so i, I used a huge pad and this is um 300 gsm paper oh this is from zen r2 we also have um, watercolor paper, watercolor pads, uh, semi blocks, I should say. Uh, once uh, two sides are glued, two sides are not. So a pad slash block. All right, so I'm going to just twist it around. Okay, let's continue with our um, with our work. Again, you're just flipping what you did from the other side now on the other side. So I'm going to start again um, from the edges. Okay, let me just lock this. Okay. So how do you guys um, paint with your reference photo? Do you print it out? Do you have it on your phone or your computer? Usually when I do, um, when I have a reference photo or model for my paintings of people, I usually print them out. But with um, 
with flowers and other subjects. I just have them on the iPad. I print them out for the people because I also um, change some of the poses or some of the um, details so I can draw on the, the printed paper. Okay, uh, and then I'll just leave this to dry before working on this. So I'll jump and move on to this section. So now that I've prepared a lot of mixture, I can just keep on painting. So I suggest you do this too. Um, if you know your, how big you're going to work, you can already prepare your mixture. end here and again leave that to dry so just keep in mind if you want your crisp edges you need to give your um, work time to dry because if it's wet and you paint another one beside it um, it will of course bleed to the other side and you will lose your nice edges and for um, works like this you really want them you want your crisp um, edged petals because they will really uh, make your work okay so this is why i'm also jumping here and there and working in sections but if you're not in a hurry like me then you can um, just leave it to dry and take a break have some tea or coffee or wine, whichever you like to have when you're painting. Probably not wine. <laughs> I mean, I love my wine, but if you're going to do um, details like this and you're going to come back to it, um, I think it's best if you will still have your control when you get back. Whenever I see a peony I want to paint, um, I always get discouraged and I just say, okay, I'll do it later or next time because it takes, looking at it, I know it's going to take a lot of work, but I can say um, yes, but it's actually easy in a way that I can work on it section by section. So the pressure is off. It's just going to take more time than other flowers, but um, difficulty-wise, it's not extremely difficult. It's just there's more to do because there are more petals. But um, technique-wise, it's just the same technique that I would use for other flowers, so not too bad. All right. So now that I've had this and this is kind of dry, I can now add the pink here. So this is a much paler pink. And again, I have to leave a white, very thin white edge. Between the two. Okay, and there's a curl here actually. So this petal is not one straight. It curved a little bit inwards and then outwards again so I also need to show that so I separate them as well so the white edges actually help with that so you want to keep them and here too so it also curved outwards so this area of the petal it's like a ribbon that curled like that Okay, so just remember to check your reference photo so you're not confused as to why your sketch looks like that. And you also really want to include details like this because they make your flowers look more real. For me, the more imperfect it is, the more real it looks. 
it just looks imperfect but <laughs> yes so you can totally have wine if it's a more relaxed you know uh, more I actually maybe I should do that when because I have a hard time letting go of control I do very well with works like this that need a lot of control but um, when I need to be more loose I have trouble so I I think I've just found my answer <laughs> maybe I should have wine next time if I want to paint um, loose florals okay so here let's add a deep section okay so some deep pink but just quarter of an inch or so and then it starts to lighten so again just dip your brush in the water wipe it off if it still has too much and usually by the edge my brush barely has any pigment left it's just water and I'm just getting the pigment from here and spreading it upwards okay so you just keep practicing this um, I, I started actually with practicing in a whole line of nine boxes so I start from very pale and slowly moving to the right and making it darker as it progresses so you can um, learn how to control your water control your pigment so you can do um, exercises like that and it would really help with um, your water control your mixing okay, so there's a very deep part here where you see a pocket between the the next petal Okay, so there's a bit of shadowed area so I'm going to add that again you really want to add these things because they would really help already here um, your work had more impact because it had the darker areas so imagine if you add two or more layers and you keep layering your values it would really make it look great okay so now let's I let I let this dry and work here okay so another pink so again this is the outer part of the petal curling inwards so it's much lighter and adding dipping your brush in water rinsing your pigment out so that you end up with a really pale wash and again, don't forget to leave some bits of white here and there peeking through. It separates your curl from the inner parts of the petals. All right, so next we have this big chunk of petal here. So that's going to make your work progress so much faster. Okay, so this is not too dark but not too light and again you can already add the, the strokes if you want then with a wet brush that you just dunked in your water spread it upwards don't worry if strokes get covered you just want a a light stroke at the end you don't want very hard lines okay and don't forget again to leave a white edge okay so I suggest you really take time with this okay um, I need to finish as much as I can in this time but if you t take time uh, you'll enjoy it more and each petal that you finish and you start to build your full flower it's very rewarding okay so I'm going to work on this next similar to this big chunk of pink and 
then strokes. Okay, so this is the thing as well with <clears throat> nice thick paper, 100% uh, cotton. Um, usually when it starts to dry with other paper, it leaves like ed hard edges that it's so hard to um, soften. But with um, cotton paper, it really allows you to do rubbing and you know fixing the edges that you need to fix. And the paper doesn't disintegrate when you do that. So when I know that I'm going to be doing a lot of that, um, just uh, use your nice paper, okay? And just take your time so you, you don't feel like you're... I know how you feel, like paper is so expensive, but I can say like right now my work is so much easier compared to if I was scrimping as, as per usual and using cheaper paper. I feel you. I also have a hard time using nice paper all the time. Okay, so I'm just, there's an odd yellows, I believe. Okay, um, next, I'm just working in sections and making sure that the parts that I'm working are dry and won't affect the parts that I will work on next. Okay, so let me just go over the outermost part which is a very deep pink here and then going outwards so if it's not deep enough don't worry because again you can do that to your second and third layers you can keep layering on top until you get the value that you're looking for. Okay, next. Sometimes I get confused because the petals just overlap each other. So just make sure to, to check your reference so that you know you're working on the right section. moving here now where there's also another deep area so the the way that the petals curl really gives you time to jump and move from one section to the next okay getting there as you can see um so it really when you add the the strokes especially for the big um curls of the petals it really adds to the uh, the whole peony effect so uh, that's another thing that i've uh, observed uh, the petals of the peonies are, are quite textured okay um uh, let's see i think this is dry so i can add the pink the paler pink they're all pink so let me see the paler pink and again trying to leave a white edge for the ends of the petals so it even helps you out with how it it looks like with the white edges okay next another pink with a white edge here So, uh, the layers, it's, sometimes it looks like a cabbage, does it not? <laughs> Peonies also remind me of, of cabbages. Okay, they have a similar like, curling um, look. Anyone out here planting their own food? That's my dream someday to be able to 
plant some plants that I can eat, <laughs> plant my own food basically. <laughs> Not all, at least some. I'm not very good with plants so it is really a dream someday hopefully some people are just really good with plants like you know just very instinctive my grandmother was one she's very good with things she can grow food in buckets As a child, I was actually, I remember a time where I was so surprised that she was picking stuff in the garden and that we would eat it. <laughs> Ignorant me, but yeah, uh, when I grew up, of course, I was like amazed to be self-sufficient and be able to plant some of the food that you need to eat. That's mostly herbs, like spring onions and um, basil okay again adding my strokes but it's too dark so I'm I just rinse my brush briefly in my jar of water okay so sometimes um, some colors are just very intense so you need to be careful and if there's too much, um, don't be afraid to just rinse it out of your brush because you can still pull the color that's already here outwards. Yes, I, I agree. I remember the some of the vegetables. Um, the papaya. Okay, we had a papaya tree growing at the back and it was really... I was spoiled that when I bought one from the market, I was like... Oh, this is not how I know my papaya to taste like. So yeah, you also don't need to harvest it too soon. So it definitely will taste so much better and fresher. So that is my dream <laughs> to someday be able to plant and harvest some stuff. I know, right? Um, for a bit, when I was young, we had tomatoes that were that grew and thrived before they before we killed them off. And yes, uh, they taste so much better. Like there's a perfect sweetness to them, to the tomatoes. It's really great. Wow, good one, Joe. <laughs> Someday I hope to be like you, <laughs> growing at least at least some, not all. Um, okay, let's see. I'm getting confused. Okay, okay, we're here. So let me just see where I left off. Okay, so this is a paler pink. So some parts are actually just one section, but the, the petals just suddenly curved like, in a, you know, like this. So some parts are darker, some parts are lighter because, of course, they, they were, they're more ex exposed to the light. So they will be lighter. So this one is an example. This is actually just one petal that curved up and then inwards. So the inwards part is quite shadowed and the outwards part is not. But there's a section where there's a deep V, which I'm adding now. And there you go. So once it's wet and you need some parts to be darker you can just drop in color you can just drop in more pigment here and there and it's going to spread a bit okay so uh, you can also also lift it off if you feel like it's spreading too much you can lift it off and wipe it if you feel like it's too dark okay so when everything is still wet everything you can still move around Wow, <laughs> you guys are so awesome. <laughs> oh, I hope to be like you guys someday. I want to, I, I'm right now living in the, in the city where there's hardly any space. 
but I want to start with just growing them in, in pots and such. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually liking how this is turning out. Um, I'm already imagining parts that I know I sh uh, would be darker next time, next um, layer, I mean. Okay, so um, even just two layers will already make a difference later on, especially when the second layer is adding more of the shadowed areas. So this one is another shadowed area that I'm adding. So right now it still kind of blends with the with the mid pinks, but once I add another layer later, it will really just recede and the pale pinks will come forward. Okay, so it's similar to the idea of uh, fusing warm and cool colors together, balancing them. The warm colors um, advance and the cool colors recede so bal a balancing act really okay so i like it um i can say it's starting to indeed look like a peony <laughs> okay so a lot of the um detail work will be here later which i won't finish all i'll just do one section so you can see how i do it because again, it will be just a, repet a repetitive a technique. Okay, so let me leave this area for now so that I don't smudge um, stuff and work on this area. Okay, there's a, a really tiny petal peeking through here. So I'm trying not to cover the, the whites of the the petals beside it so you have to be um, alert about that you want to preserve the the white edges so when you layer your next try to remember that and don't cover the whites some parts you can definitely cover as long as you still get the general flow of things okay let me just again brush this outwards so don't be afraid to add your textures you actually want them like this petal has a lot of textures so I'm trying to just loosely follow what I see again you don't have to be too exact unless of course that's really what you're going for but if you just want to your final work to look like your reference and not to be an exact copy then you can just do something similar as what I'm doing just getting the general curves and folds then adding your outward strokes Okay, it's uh, getting there, getting there. And now um, I'll leave this section so I won't mar stuff and work on the last few petals over here. And then we can go to our next layer. Okay, so um, it will take time, but you know, you, you, you can do this um, one layer per day. And you, in two to three days, you'll be finished. If you're going to work even smaller, then you'll also finish it um, maybe in a shorter amount of time. But just remember that if you're working smaller, then of course, um, it would also be more delicate work. So that's why I, I went for this mid-sized um, sized paper so that 
I don't need to go too small with my brushes for the detailed work. But if you're used to working small, then of course that won't be a, a big adjustment. So again, up to you. You can make you can paint this even bigger or you can paint similar to mine because this is a number five brush and it's uh, it's good enough for the smaller works, the smaller details and even the the bigger areas. So whatever is most comfortable for you. Okay, and now I'm going for this part. This all this petal also has a lot of curves. So like this section here, that's why I added a, the sketch. There's a line that I added that I didn't do for the other petals. I just usually add a line when there's like a very vivid curve that I need to remember. Okay, so there are curves here and there. So as long as you sketch out the important parts that you need to remember, um, it will be so much easier. Okay, so that's why uh, I did take some time sketching this earlier. When I was sketching it out, I'm like, oh gosh, I think I need to do a lot of sketching because otherwise I would be lost. Once you're into all these petals, you can easily get lost. Okay, so I'm now connecting it to the side so it's not too hard edged. I want some edge, but not too hard. Then again, add the strokes. Okay, wet your brush. So don't wait for things to dry up soon because, well, again, it, they're going to leave hard edges. So if you don't want that, then they should not be dry before you work on them. So I'm going to go back here now and let me see. Okay, so this is the curve. Think. Okay. So I'm just checking before I <laughs> make mistakes. Okay, so there's a deep pocket here again. So I'm adding a layer. Then let's go for the pink here first. Okay, so remember, some colors are also quite staining, so they will also be much harder to, to lift or to move around once you've applied them. So try to also get to know your colors so that um, if you do use them, you'll know if you need to work more precisely or you need to um, just work in so many layers so that um, you won't have trouble fixing things if they're too dark, for example. So some colors are um, so staining, like um, they even stain my brushes. I'm sure you've encountered colors like that too, like they turn your brushes blue. But you can still wash them off a bit. When, when you do a deep cleaning with um, a brush cleaner. But some of my brushes have like a blue stain <laughs> from um, cerulean blue. My cerulean, I have a cerulean blue that's quite, quite staining. So again, um, just swatch your colors out and um, create your own um, color swatch card. So if you, if you want to know how to do that, we have one of our lives from before that um, I did that. I did the how to make your own swatch card. So you can see how you can make one and um, get to know your colors um, even better. Okay, so I'll leave this again for now. 
and do the pale pink ones here. So I really love the white edges. They really, they really help me out right now to tell which areas I'm working on. Okay, so this one is very pale, so I'm actually going to lift some of the color out. Okay, so just a little bit of completion here and there, and we can move on to our next layer. So we can stop with two, so you don't spend hours with me. <laughs> I, this would normally take me um, probably four hours um, if I want to take my time. <laughs> Especially if you want to do all the little lines. But if you're just um, looking for a more relaxed, realistic painting, then you don't need to do all the details. Here too. And let me just check here. So before I miss any small spots. Okay, so now that we have this down, I'm now going to need a much deeper color. So I'm just going to add in the same mixture. Okay, more red. That's girl of red. And then I'm now going to get pink from my uh, Moderno. So I'm no, now adding some of the upper pink. I want the shadows to have a bit more um, depth and not just using one color. So you can add a bit of pink, or if you want, you can even add a bit of blue. So let's say, um, let's say I'm going to swatch this out first. Okay, let me find my, okay. So I'm now trying to see if it's dark enough or not. Okay, let me add more. Okay, and maybe a dash of um, ultramarine violet. Okay, so that made it a bit darker. Let's see. Okay, so I like it better. So if you can see, um, this was too light, so I added more um, red and pink and then a dash of ultramarine violet to um, help the color even go deeper. Okay, so you can add, with red, you can add a bit of your uh, cool blue or your dark purple. Uh, but just do it um, slowly so you don't make things too dark too soon. Okay. So let's see. Let's add our second layer. So this is where you will need your absorbent cloth really handy because you will need a lot of going back and forth. Okay, so we can of course test a small section of it out. 
like here on the edges this is a deeper purple here so this one you can also do layers of this so you don't have to make it so dark on your first layer you can wait for it to dry and see how it looks before you apply it to to everything okay so again I'm deepening first the shadowed parts I like to do this because it really helps me um, view things better especially when I need to darken also the petals so I'll do the the shadowed areas And you can even darken this further later on, add more shading to your shadows if you want. But for now, just darkening them will really um, help things move, look better. So as you can see, the contrast is much greater now. And then you will start to see that your petals will need an extra layer or two because they're starting to look too pale. So you, you work on your layers step by step and you add more to each section of your work. Once you see your dark shadows, you will easily be able to tell that you will need more, more color, more shading in these areas okay but for now again shadows first so don't be afraid to go dark okay in fact when i choose um anything that i'd like to paint i try to choose the ones that have more contrast in them more light and shadow because already it will look dynamic and so half your work is done okay two choosing the right subject already is like half the work so it might you know more often than not take more time to achieve um the full work but it will be a more rewarding experience. Okay, and then this section here. So just refer to your reference in a more general view. Okay, again, you're not there to copy it exactly. If you've copied about 80% of it, that's so good already. So don't be, don't be too attached to your reference that you want it to look like a photograph, unless of course that's what you're aiming for. But if it's not, then you can relax. It's actually even better if you put in your own um, interpretations to things. Now we all see things differently. Okay, and now I'm also adding here. So remember, I just added to my previous mixture. So using almost the same colors or using colors that were there previously, it will really help your work come together rather than uh, mixing, uh, using so many different pigments and so many colors sometimes. Um, more, more often than not, it's going to um, make your colors clash against each other. So again, experiment with using just limited colors and what you can achieve with with those colors. So for example, in school, we were just we just started with um, three to five colors and then we just mixed everything we needed from from those colors. Of course, it takes time. Sometimes you just want to, you know, use pre-mixed colors 
but I can say that um, usually works that you mix the colors yourself they look so much better than just always using from pre-mixed colors there are some colors that are just your favorites for example I like Hooker's green it's something that I often use and just add little bits of other colors to to just change so but you know you don't need 50 colors for sure if you have around 15 to 18 I think that's actually a lot already okay so next okay so again just deepening the the shadows to also help us see which areas of the petals need more, need more oomph to their color. Okay, so I can say, let's start here. This can be darker. So I just add to the edges and then again, pull it outwards and don't be afraid to add the strokes, the linear strokes, because you actually want some texture to your petals. Okay, so this is the second layer. And then this two. So I'm adding to all the petals, especially here at the edges. Okay, so just on the inner part and then pulling it outwards. Okay, so here it's starting to look really more solid compared to here. Okay, so you can already compare. It's more 3D, more volume, more depth, more, there's more contrast and looks so much better. Yes, it is a challenge indeed, the minimal palette. Sometimes when I'm so lazy, I'm like, ugh. But um, half the time I regret it because I end up with colors that just don't look good together. So I, the magic of, of a limited or a minimal palette is really, um, it's really true. <laughs> I now, I mean, I can really see the point of my teachers of, you know, forcing us to just use about three to five colors and just really being able to learn how to get all the other colors we need and also especially with um with watercolors which have um which really mix wonderfully i mean watercolors are really meant to be mixed um some colors that granulate when they mix with for example, with your granulating blue with your red, and then you mix them, and when they start to dry, they sort of separate a bit, and you see the magic of the two colors mixed but not fully mixed. You also get beautiful um, textures like that that you don't always get with pre-mixed colors. So it's also something to, to look forward to when you mix your own colors. Okay, so here I'm just making sure the tiny folds of the petals here and there. So a lot of little folds that are really wonderful to include. Okay, so you observe a peony closely and see what makes a peony a peony like what characteristics so for me it's the the edges of the petals they're really very curled and very um different from each other so if you get that characteristic and st using strokes for the petals then your peonies will look more peony like 
And there's a bit of dash here in one of the petals that I like to add. I like to add the little things. Okay, so um, I've worked here. Now I'm going to add more color here to the petals. So again, just on the edges, then pulling it outwards. So all the petals will have a second layer because they're too pale, okay? Once I put the shadows in, I, I, it gives me more perspective into the values that I need to add. So until you add the shadows to your works, you will end up with a more mid-tone work. So again, you really need to be more confident and put those shadows in. That's one of the first um, things that I learned from drawing. So when I was drawing before, um, I tended to just do the mid-tones. So I ended up with a very grayish work or works in general. Until, of course, I force myself to really, you know, add the darker areas. And then you will see what you've been missing. Okay, so I've been there. So I can really tell you guys that it is a struggle at the start. Because you're afraid to, you know, um, to make things too dark. But unless you do add the dark stuff, <clears throat> everything is just going to look blah. So... With watercolors, it's much easier because you can layer and you can just add more layers until you get your desired um, shade. So at least you know you don't you don't need to do it in one go. You can do you can work towards it. Okay, so again, adding the strokes still. Okay, and sometimes I really don't want it to be too evident, so I go over it with a wet brush while it's still kind of wet, and it softens the edges of the lines. Okay, so now I can, I think I can already flip to the other side. So here again, you can compare the two sides, so you can see the difference, really. Uh, much, much more complete and looks almost finished this side. Okay, so let's move on to the opposite side and then let's move on to the middle part. But I won't finish all, okay? So you don't have to stick with me till uh, whenever. Okay, so again, uh, let me flip this because I will be confused. Okay. All right, so here it's quite dark. So again, apply it liberally, don't be afraid. And then just dipping my brush in the water, I pull the color upwards. Okay, so looks so much better already. Next, these parts also heavily shadowed. Okay, so if you want your reds to go a bit darker but not you know murky um, you can just add blue or a bit of purple to them to your reds and it'll deepen your reds because if you just add black or brown it's just going to make it look muddy which you don't always which you probably don't want for sure okay let's see okay here too there's a bit of a darker area and again add the strokes when you can 
so that you don't need to do so much in the end because you already have your strokes in. Okay, and then this part is of a much pinker red, so this is perfect. Okay, so as you can see, um, you can just rub it in up to a point when it's um, cotton, 100% cotton. I can't always do this with 50% cotton or worse, 25. So if you are going to do um, a lot of strokes out of going back and forth, um, then make sure your paper can handle it. Okay, and on the edge, I'm just going to line it lightly. Okay, so I probably need to add another shade here because this is too light, but um, I'll do that for later. Now I'm going to go through all the darker areas. Again, so I can easily tell which parts or which petals need more. This petal has a curve right here that I will add now. And again, the strokes. Okay, so a lot of layering, but you can again just divide this across your days, across your, um, if you want to finish it one day, you know, you can just work one hour, take a break. You can work by section if you want, because you can definitely divide it petal by petal. So very detailed very a bit challenging but you can at least divide it into sections okay and so this part is also actually deep so i'm going to add this okay and then add the strokes Then go over it with a wet brush if you don't want it to be too hard. And there you go. Okay, so this part is very deep. So let me just, I'm actually running out of this mixture. But I think it will be enough for the second layer. So for the third layer, I'll probably, if I want to add another, I'll probably mix in a more um, blue or purple to even deepen the color. So try to not just use the same three colors of red, um, white, and yellow, and just by increasing the, the saturation, but also adding um, blue or uh, purple or if you want gray to darken the color it makes it look more um, dynamic okay next 
I'm also going to darken this part because it is more pink on the edges. And again, strokes. Okay. So for the areas that I didn't really do the strokes earlier, it's my opportunity now. So that I don't have to go too detailed and use a detailed brush to add the minute lines. Okay, so uh, just a few more and then um, I'm going to work on the center. This one before I forget sometimes the biggest section you forget because you focus on the little things So um, this is about uh, the flowers are not fully finished, but uh, they're good enough. Um, you can already see the contrast, the proper contrast, because uh, we added several, uh, several deeper shades of the darker areas. So as long as you have your dark darks, and the, the, the more that you make it even you know, as deep as you see in your reference photo, the better it's going to look. Okay, so um, you really need to um, go through and add your layers one by one. And, uh, you know, just take your time and um, take breaks between layers so that you won't get too, con too confused. Okay, so now let's start with um, the center. So let's start with a, um, a pale shade of pink just all over. Okay. So make sure it's really pale so you don't because of course these parts they still have the petals behind them so they won't be as they shouldn't be white so i'm adding it in the areas especially where there will be the stems of the pistils. Okay, so just very pale. Here and there, and don't worry if there's a little bit of white paper here and there too. Okay, and wait for it to dry. Then you can mix your green. Um, you can mix your, let's dry with um, Hansa Yellow. Okay, and um, cerulean blue. Okay, so we have a, a pale green here. So let's just do a pale wash all over. So the center, they're like green raisins here. <laughs> okay, so we add those. Okay, and again, um, you wait for it to dry. 
before you add any other details. Okay, so let's wait for that to dry, but meanwhile we can already add our yellow here. So we can do, it's a really warm yellow, so we can do Hansa yellow. Okay, so we'll just cover this section with, I actually drew all the little buds at the end. So you can color it in one by one if you want, like what I'm doing, just to get the shape of things. Or you can do a whole wash. Um, you can do either, okay? And then you can always um, add the, the shadows after. So for the shadows, I think I'm actually going to use a, um, a colored pencil. Because sometimes when I add the shadow with watercolor, I, it gets too dark. So for for the ends, I do the the watercolor, and then for the shadows or the extra details, I will just use color pencils. So if you have watercolor pencils, you can do that too. At least you can also. Um, wet it after if you want. Okay, so this Hansa yellow is, is perfect for it because it's a warm yellow. Okay, so again, I won't finish all the parts because it's going to be too long, but let's wait for this to dry and then let's use our um, colored pencils. Okay, so I'll use a um, watercolor pencil so that we can, you can still color it in after if you want. Okay, so I'm going to use um, some orange and some brown. Okay. So I'll use my blow dryer just so I can hasten the dry time. Okay, so let's try. So the center of, uh, so this one, it's not just yellow, so it has also lines on it. So we'll add some lines using our pencils. Okay, so this is another way of doing detail if you don't want to do them all in watercolor. You can also, of course, use mixed media. But if you don't want to do mixed media, then feel free to switch to a detail brush and then adding the details. So I'm just going to add the lines first with um, orange and then you can cover it with a bit of brown okay so you kind of blend them together okay but you can you can just start with orange <coughs> sorry and see how you like it okay so start with orange and then you can just add brown um, here and there okay so um, I do this sometimes too because there are times when it seems so harsh when I do um, lines from my watercolor and you can also separate each one okay so if it's a watercolor pencil you can totally wet it after and it will soften it even further okay like this so um, I have just some watercolor pencils it's not a, a big set but um, it's enough and you can already do so much with a minimal set 
Okay, so you can even shade it. You can even shade some parts using your watercolor pencil. Okay, so let's do this quickly just so I can show you. Okay, so I'm also sort of dividing them, separating them from each other. So you can easily add the shading and the shadows that you need. And if you want, again, you can always, since it's watercolor pencil, you can go over it with your brush. Okay, so that's how I do these really um, so detailed things if I don't want to uh, go over them with a detailed brush. Okay, so don't forget to add um, these, uh, this part with the center. So what we'll do is we'll do strokes of pink. Here and there. Okay. it's the, the petal color showing through and we'll also do strokes of the yellow mixed with a little bit of the green okay for the pistils stems Okay, so alternate it between the, the pink that you did earlier. Of course, you can do it in so much more detail if you want, but this is my shortcut of doing things. Um, that's already good enough. Okay, and you can just soften it. Okay, so there you have it. Um, you can finish this. You've uh, gotten all the things you need to do. It's not finished, but you already know what to do all around. Just repetitive. What you did here, you move here and here, and you can finish everything. So just remember to try to add as much depth and uh, contrast between your shades so that your work will look even uh, so much better. Okay, it won't look so flat and uh, 2D. You can give the illusion of it being 3D. Okay, so all of that will happen when you have um, the right amount of depth. So now it looks like a beautiful pink cabbage. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for sticking it out. It's long, but as you can see, it really takes long to do something like this. But it's only long because um, it's several sections. So it seems like it's so hard but it's actually the hardest part is the sketching <laughs> because you need to get everything right but once you have everything right and it's the perfect guide for you then you can focus on each petal each section one by one and you can take your time and you can totally do this you know you saw how i did it it's not so um complicated it's just um repetitive going around and around Okay, so um, I will share my digital sketch with you guys after this live. So you can, you can save it, you can print it out, you can, you know, you can trace it if you want, or you can have it on the side as a guide to see how, uh, how I sketch it, what sections did I include, did I have to sketch every little line, you know, things like that. So it's, uh, it's going to be a guide for you, so you, you won't have to sketch everything, but at least sketch what I did as well, and it. It helped me out because I know where things end and where um, I need to add the extra lines like here. Okay, so I hope you try this out. Okay, so again, it um, it might take long, but um, I, I really feel that, you know, it's just, it's just a step-by-step. -step. So here it is. Um, 
right now. So it's not finished, but uh, once you've finished everything, um, again, you can use uh, colored pencils or it doesn't have to be watercolored pencils. It can be just colored pencils. Just make sure that it's sharp so that when you do the, the fine lines, um, you'll get the nice fine line. Okay, so sharpen your pencils so that you get the right um, thin line. Okay, <laughs> I'm uh, reaching out for words. Okay, so this is my um, peony close-up. I hope you try it out and um, if you do, share it with me. I'd love to see it because um, it's such a <laughs> it's such a challenge, but it's so satisfying actually. So I'll when when I finish this, I'm also gonna share it with you guys. So let's share with each other because it's such an accomplishment of doing this focused close up work. But I feel like um, you know there are so many uh, peony paintings out there, and this uh, close up of it it's actually um, a beautiful representation as well. Okay, so. Thank you for joining and I'll see you next Monday for the next one. Bye guys.